Hi, my name is Austin Tippett. Some people call me Tex or Texas uh, at the summer camp I worked at. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but today for July 25th, I'm going to be going up to Irons, Michigan. I'm really excited to visit some of my friends staying at a cabin, an Airbnb. Um, I'm going to film their day and I feel like that's how that's going to be my day is going to be filming their day. I'm really excited. I really like uh, filming and editing and all the video production stuff. Um, yeah. Hello. Ah, do it. Do it again. <laughs> I hate that. That's how I start my teaching lessons. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Uh, hi, my name's Aiden. I'm also known as Beans with a couple of friends. And um, my full name is Aiden Wysocki. Uh, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm up in Irons, Michigan right now, uh, staying for the whole month of July, uh, experiencing the great outdoors and all the beautiful lakes and um, nature that we have out here. My name is Dan Kratt. Uh, I am 23 years old I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, currently, me and two of my closest friends are living in Irons, Michigan in an Airbnb. I'm Ian Crowley. I'm 24 <laughs> years old and I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Me and two of my best friends are spending the month up here in Irons, Michigan. Um, we're working remotely and we figured we would just make the best out of a bad situation and um, I guess my personal reasons for coming up here would be trying to get closer in touch with um, what makes us inherently human. I am in grad school. I'm studying to be a teacher at U of M and they're both working remote and I'm taking classes remote. So we decided why the hell would we stay in Grand Rapids in our parents' basement for the month? Uh, let's just go and live on a lake somewhere. So that's what we did. We found an Airbnb and we've been living up here, just the three of us. So I came to Irons, Michigan uh, to challenge my views and maybe experience a different environment and how myself and my own experiences would react and maybe uh, form or morph around a different environment. And I love challenging myself and my own ideas. And, and I also like challenging the world I live in. Normal morning up here in Irons, Michigan, in our Airbnb that we've created for ourselves. <laughs> um, a normal morning wakes, I wake up around uh, 8.30, I think. Um, I usually wake up a little earlier because Ian's alarm goes off and he's an earlier riser than me. Uh, I think his usually goes off at seven and I try and go back to sleep after that. Usually I wake up, I make the coffee right away. Um, and then I go and I try and do some sort of activity in the morning before my classes start, whether that be kayaking on the water, jumping in the water just to like wake myself up a little or going for a bike ride. Um, I'm a little wary of going for bike rides in the morning now after I had a black bear encounter last week. Uh, so trying to be cautious about when I go biking now. It's been very interesting being up here and not having to drive to work. Um, you know, I don't have to deal with getting in a vehicle or traffic. Um, I can just wake up in the morning, grab my laptop and you know, walk outside and work from the picnic table in the sun with my shirt off or, um, yeah, you know, take a break and go for a quick swim. And, you know, that's been something that's been really important for me so far is just taking a step away from technology when I have the chance to, obviously that's 
difficult during the middle of a work day, but after the work day, I feel like I really can, you know, close my computer and, you know, leave work um, and sort of embrace just being in a remote area and, you know, having access to all these beautiful bodies of water and, you know, yeah. I've started to introduce a couple of new things to my routine. Uh, one of those is first thing I do is get my swimsuit on, walk down to the dock, get a couple stretches in and swim out to a sandbar about 200 yards out into the water. And at the sandbar, I do a couple water aerobics and, and get my body moving and my mind turning. Um, and then I do a quick uh, swim back to the dock. Um, that's where I, I begin to think about my day and, and some of the things I'll be doing, whether it's work or uh, having some fun activities planned, making meals. Um, and once I have that plan in my head, I, I start to execute um, each, each thing on my list, uh, whether it's at the top of my list or at the bottom, they're all equally important. And I like to get to as many of the things that I, I have decided on as I can. And I have a big breakfast. We've been trying to do community meals up here and make sure that no one ever eats alone, which I think is a really fun thing that we've been doing. Um, we share the workload, someone cooks, someone does the dishes and we're all eating together every meal as much as we can. Yeah, after work, I, I like to take a little bit of time to myself. Um, a couple weeks ago, we found a spot on, uh, I think it's the Manistee River, the little Manistee um, that I've been biking to. And there's a little dock that I'll either go and do some breath work on or some improvised yoga because I don't really know how to do yoga. Um, and then I'll do some, you know, cold exposure in the river. Uh, I've been swimming upstream, which has been a good workout, but it's also a funny concept to me, just like, uh, I don't know. It's a, a fun way to get in touch with nature and to ground myself a little bit while also, uh, like challenging it in a sense, um, which I think is a good balance to try and find. It's like, yeah, finding that harmony, but also pushing back a little bit. At night, we've been playing a lot of games, been playing a lot of nerds, playing Catan, uh, or sometimes we'll just sit around here and just strum the guitar and, you know, watch the sunset. And it's, it's awesome. It's, it's really given us like a, a new, um, like day to day routine that I would never have had living with my parents, you know, in living in Grand Rapids, it's, it's different. It's a new beat you know, of the drum that we're living to, which is cool. My favorite things that we've created in this Airbnb, and I don't know if the Airbnb host would have allowed this, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. But we have in our little workspace over there, we've got a vision board. And that's something that uh, my professor of one of my classes creates in her classroom. And she, she tried to do it um, in her classroom for Zoom and, uh, I'll show it in a little bit, but we've got some quotes that might um, inspire us. We've got some story maps that uh, give a little glimpse into who we are as people. Um, what else do we have on there? We've got just some random things. We've got our to-do lists on there that we need to take care of for the week. And it's just kind of like, I love being able to go into my workspace and see the deer above and then like all of these little like things that we've collected over this month at our airbnb what do i love um like i said I, I love my family i love my friends i love my girlfriend i love nature um i love being able to get outside and get active um and just do whatever i can to make myself uh, feel happy in the moment um, i really enjoy a good book I love food. Can't forget that one. Um, yeah, I think I, I really just, I try to have an appreciation for the simple things in life. To me, that's what brings me the most joy. What do I love? Um, I'm trying to focus on loving like the present moment as much as I can. And I think if anything that this quarantine from COVID-19 has taught us is that like anything can change at the stop of a moment. And we are just locked in our houses now. And um, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of 
self-reflection and um i hope that when this pandemic is over um we don't go back to the normal lives that we had before i hope that we come out of it with a little more uh clarity about our desires and i know that for me specifically i am studying right now to be a teacher um and i hope that education looks completely different that's something that i'm completely passionate about and i hope that um yeah i hope that we come out of this with a little more clarity about the way we want to live our lives and i think that's what we're doing up here in this cabin is trying to enjoy take advantage of the moment that we were given as best as we can i don't know <laughs> all right so my buddy dan couldn't remember what talking about what he loved so i'm going to talk about what he loves for him um hmm dan loves dad jokes he loves all things acting like a dad so I'm trying to think of some typical dad phrases. Oh, um, he talks about nightcaps a lot, which is like the last drink before you go to sleep. He loves saying the word warm up. I don't even think he always wants a warm up. I think he just likes saying warm up because it's a thing that dads say. And that's when, you know, like you've been sipping on a coffee for a while and it's maybe half full and, you know, you, you call the waitress over for a warm up so she'll give you some fresh hot coffee. Um, so Dan loves those two things. What else does he love? Um, I don't know. He loves cooking. He loves riding his bike. Um, he loves books. He loves Camp Henry. That's a given. Um, but most of all, I think Dan loves his friends and his family and the people that are close to him. And I hope he doesn't hate me for saying all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes. <laughs> so, I love... Uh, my family, my mom, my dad, my grandparents, uh, my sister, and my stepbrothers and stepsisters. I also love uh, being outside. Um, just ever since a young age, I love getting outside, um, getting in the water, walking through the woods, um, and seeing where, uh, I suppose, structure and man-made things end and where uh, naturally created things begin. Um, I like to find that and and go explore as much as I can. So I love to explore. What do I love? I love a lot of things. I love my cats. I really love my cats. They're my little babies. Um, I love my friends. Obviously I'm going up to see them for a weekend and I've been going a few other weekends. I just really like hanging out with them. Um, I really love my family, obviously. Uh, I love filming. And editing, I really, I actually really love editing as tedious as it is. As it is. It's really fun to me. Um, I, I pretty much love like everything. I'm a really loving person, I think. Come here, baby. Oh. I love my kitty. I love my precious little kitty. Oh. <laughs> Try again. I'm gonna leave it out there for a I think he is a snapper. Look at that nose. The really? pointed nose is a snapper, yeah. And the arch on his shell. Yeah, but the colors. Good. Yeah, I don't know. I still think he's a snapper. Little baby snapper. Oh, no, he imprinted on you. You're his mom. Yeah. All right. Show your hands. No turtle in your hands. Take your swimsuit off. No. <laughs> it's rolling, Dan. Come on. You're wasting footage. <laughs> I got so much in my nose. <laughs> All right.
Hey, show me some stoke. Oh, that was... <laughs> nice. How you feeling, Aiden? Good. Exhausted. Aiden has far better rhythm. Oh shit, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, buddy, it's a seat cushion for a reason. Yeah. Light. Oh, look at these berries are. No, I would not eat them there. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, bring us. <laughs> Does the new moon mean when it's a sliver or uh, the whole thing? It depends on what side it's on. Really? Yeah. Are you guys touring? Crit! <laughs> Start rolling, we got an hour and a half to go on this. Is the lighting good? Oh. It's on auto, so it'll automatically be good, right? We should have gotten a video of us being like the only ones with masks on yesterday in, that in the bus. In the bus? Oh uh, yeah, just whip out the GoPro and you're like, ah, here we are on the bus. Just, that would have been kind of funny. Yeah, that would have been. Like, jumping in? I was hoping that one of these two would go first. No, no! Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, don't... Don't dive! What? I could see the dirt from where you hit the ground. Yeah, I had my hands down there first. It was kind of a, a, like a low and slow dive, you know. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm not <laughs> doing that. I'm going oh, what feet. is this? Oh. <laughs> I'm going feet first. Do you see those people over there? What are they yeah. doing? They're kayaking. You want in? Do you want me to go first? He's going to throw the fish. Oh, yikes. Oh. Oh. It's oh. slippery. It's a fish. It's covered in scales. We should give him a funeral. We had a funeral for a fish. <laughs> The whole thing. We had a funeral for a fish. Oh man! He's Give it to the spider. Please don't. Come on. Okay. You sh you should toss it in the uh, kayak and see if the spider will eat it. Nice. Oh yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Kiss him. Here. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to think of like who is that audience? I feel like that's from my mind. Yeah, who's watching? It's the world. You don't think you want to put this stuff out? Is that what you're thinking? No, no, I think I do. What do I fear? I fear looking back on my life when I'm much older and wishing that I had done more, um, or wishing that I had said yes to an opportunity. And I think that that is why I chose to say yes to this experience is because we were, we were all in our lockdown in our houses in COVID-19 and we had this idea and we just, I wanted to say yes, because I didn't want to look back when I'm at the end of my life and say, I wish I had said yes to that. I wanted to look back and say, I'm glad that I said yes, because I feel, I feel that oftentimes our regrets are not what we did, but what we failed to do that makes sense and I I feared uh, looking back on my life and not saying yes enough so yeah, yeah what do I fear that's a deep question um, I fear I fear inadequacy so not being able to achieve the things that I set out to do and I don't even know that I have specific goals but I have um, sort of ideas about the way that I would like my life to go and i think um if i fall short of those ideas that's something that that i fear um i also fear public perception i kind of pride myself on um, just being a kind person or i try my best to be kind to those around me and i don't know when maybe a situation gets away from me and i walk away from that situation feeling uh, yeah, like it wasn't the best person that I could have been to somebody else. That's something like it kind of makes me spiral. Um, and I question a lot of my values and my morals. And that's something that brings a lot of fear into my life. Um, I also just, I fear for my loved ones. I, I mean, my parents are getting older. My girlfriend is, um, you know, halfway across the country. And it's just something that's always in the back of your mind, like, how are they doing? What's going on with them? Uh, and it's something that I try my best to like separate from when I can. Um, but it's always lingering. Just when you care for people that much, they stay on your mind. I fear um, for the safety of myself and, and friends and family. Uh, I know that first aid is a very important thing and, and health is something that can um, slow us down in our, our efforts to pursue the unknown. And, and that is something I would fear is something that stops me from doing what I love, whether it's an injury or, or perhaps uh, something I do that results in a mistake, uh, which prohibits me from continuing to do the things I love. What do I fear? I fear in general, um, hmm. What do I fear? Uh, I would say I fear uh, forgetting things. I have a really bad memory. And uh, a lot of the times I'll be afraid to forget an important date or an important person's name or uh, an important fact or something that I wanted to do later in the day, I'll forget. And uh, I'm I try to make a lot of notes in my phone. My phone is filled with notes of like just one word sentences of stuff that I want to remember to do. Um, I also fear um, not 
being able to leave an impact, whether that be on a person or uh, the world. Um, yeah, I really fear like not having a legacy, I guess, would be a, a general fear of mine. Um, I think that what I want to change for myself and for the world is to have more empathy. I think that that would, that would be for both. I want to, I want to have more empathy, but I also want to create like spaces where we have more empathy as a human kind and, uh, yeah, not, not defaults to hate, but default to love and like, yeah. And then what's in my pocket? I don't have anything in my pocket right now. And actually, I'm glad that these have pockets because a lot of my shorts don't even have pockets. But <laughs> I've got my coffee, if that counts. <laughs> I don't know. Just I'm ready to get after today. July 25th. It's Christmas morning. <laughs> Christmas in July. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I would change about the world or that I think, you know, need to be addressed. Um, I mean, obviously, if we could create some sort of world peace or, you know, get rid of poverty and hate, um, you know, give everyone access to equal resources and opportunities. But those are things that are pretty difficult to achieve. Um, I think we can get closer, but for me personally, the things that, um, I think about on a day-to-day -day basis are, I mean, just a connection to nature and getting back to, you know, hum who humans were intended to be, um, which is up for debate, but I find that I get the most peace out of, um, yeah, out of, you know, just being in nature, being alone, having time to think. Uh, and through that, I feel that I become a better person and am able to, um, I don't know, spread that to other people, spread my joy and happiness and um, just like this grounding essence that I feel to others. And I hope that they in turn could find that for themselves or, Maybe they already have, and you know they can spread that out further. Um, and what's in that pocket of yours? What's in my pocket? I do not have anything in either pockets. Um, which typically I would have, you know, a phone, keys, wallet, and and that's been one of the cool things for me about um, being up in Irons, Michigan. You know, working remotely, we're working out of an Airbnb, so we don't have the need to go anywhere. So that gets rid of my keys. Um, you know, I'm rarely on my phone when I'm not on the clock working. I try to leave it in my bedroom and, um, and then my wallet, I'm not driving or going to the store very often. So it's, it's been cool to not have those uh, little burdens or kind of memories of, um, like, I don't know, life back in Grand Rapids. It's been nice to shed those things and leave them behind. Uh, I would change, um, Okay, something I would do to change either myself or the world is first starting by changing myself and, and my routine and my, my habits, uh, my behaviors. Um, I like to ask myself routinely if, if what I'm doing is something I, I really enjoy and that makes me happy. And that's something I would like to change for other people too, is, is to raise these questions uh, in their own heads and have them ask themselves deeper questions about their own uh, happiness and experiences in the moment and how that can relate to their past or future. All right. And what's in your pocket? Right now I've got my phone, uh, and with my phone, I've got my debit card and my driver's license and a credit card. And that's usually what I keep in my pocket. What would I change about myself or the world? Um, you know, for the world, uh, my boss at the summer camp, he always said, uh, when in doubt, default to love. And I would love if I could change the world to have everyone just default to love. I think the world would be a lot better place, uh, more loving, uh, caring. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would, my, my wish would be to, would be to have everyone be a lot less selfish. Uh, think of others first, maybe. I think that would be, I mean, that would be ideal, obviously. Uh, what do I have in my pocket? Uh, right now, I've got the lens cap for my camera because I don't want to lose it. So I just put it in my pocket whenever I take it off. That's it, though. 
Got my phone on the table. I'm um, really just getting ready to go.